All right, we call it the herd hierarchy, our 10 best teams. I spend way more time on this than any man with a real life, marriage, and kids should. Here we go. Um, number 10 is the Buffalo Bills. Folks, they're 2-0 and on the road. Now, it may be the Jets and the Giants, but it's winning on the road. And they've scored a touchdown in all five of their red zone road trips this year. Only Seattle said that. They upgraded wide receivers in the offseason. They needed to. Try to upgrade their offensive line. And I think this is the best coaching staff in the NFL that nobody talks about. We know Kansas City's well-coached. We know New England's well-coached. We know the Rams are well-coached. Uh, we know the Niners are well-coached. Buffalo never puts Josh Allen in a position to fail. This is a very well-coached team. And I think toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with – I'll tell you this this morning. If they played Cleveland this morning, Buffalo would win. Because I think I, – I honestly think this has a chance to be a wild-card team. I really do. I think they're, I, I think they're a 9-7 and seven team. There's some limitations offensively, but I like them. San Francisco, it was the one team I told you. I said, it's almost too easy. I'm stealing money. They're going to double their wins. Very creative. I still have some <laughs> doubts on Jimmy Garoppolo. I do. I worry about his health. But again, they're 2-0 and and 2-0 and on the road. They didn't win a road game last year. That's called improvement. By the way, here's the other place they improved. They already have four interceptions this year. They had only two last year. So the two big issues with them last year, lousy on the road, 2-0 and on the road, and could never take the ball away. They're taking the ball away. Now, uh, they just had their left tackle uh, out for a while, fibula issue. I don't even know where that's on your body. But Joe Staley's their left tackle. He's hurt. That does not help because I don't want Jimmy Garoppolo getting whacked. But I have the Niners, a very young offense, but fun to watch, number nine. Seahawks, Russell Wilson on in 20 minutes. Listen, the Seahawks have won eight of their last nine games. This is very much Pete Carroll. We're going to play defense. We're going to run the football. And then we're going to ask Russell Wilson about twice a game to do that, like, wand magician thing and pull out a victory. By the way, ever notice every wide receiver they attain, they all work with Russell Wilson. Uh, they're 2-0 and for the first time since their Super Bowl year. So, they, you know, I was a doubter on Seattle. I really was. I, their defense was young. I didn't think they'd overcome Frank Clark to the Chiefs. So far, they've looked pretty good. Philadelphia, listen, just because teams lose, they have an injury bug at wide receiver. They're going to be fine. Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey get healthy. They're going to be fine. I just love the coach. I love the GM. I like their quarterback. I think they have a good offensive line. Here's where I know they're good. They are third in the NFL in rush defense. They force you to throw the ball. That they got a really good defensive line. And they're also second on third down percentage. What does that mean? They keep the ball away from you. Third down, they make them first downs. Philadelphia, well coached, smartly quarterbacked, well run. I like them. Baltimore, I, I got some questions, but I, there's one thing I love. When you have a running quarterback and he puts himself and he's vulnerable, sometimes you worry about turnovers. They don't have a turnover this year. So not only are they productive, I'm not seeing a ton of penalties and I'm not seeing any turnovers. And here's the thing with Lamar Jackson. Nine starts is like Dak. He's one eight of nine. Dak's one nine of ten. This is about winning. Now, winning's not the only thing because sometimes you can mask deficiencies, Tim Tebow, with winning. But what I see is an ascending player, a very good coaching staff. They've added tight ends, wide receivers, running backs, Greg Roman, a coordinator. I, I'm not totally sure they're this good, but I like what I see. I got Baltimore at six. Green Bay, I've said all offseason, the defense will carry this team until Thanksgiving. Then Aaron Rodgers, Matt LaFleur, then they'll get it worked. Listen, five takeaways is tied for the most in the NFL. This organization two years ago said we're going to have to pay Aaron a lot of money. And they started drafting corners, and they started going into the free agent pool, which they don't love to do in Green Bay. And they went and got like Preston Smith and really good players without paying them a fortune. That defense now is young. It's fast. They're coaching it to be aggressive. And uh, they're 2-0. and And it's been, listen, Chicago and Minnesota are top five defenses. Don't look at their offense and say it's choppy. Chicago makes everybody look choppy. Chicago's going to make everybody not named Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes look choppy. Don't hold that against them early. 
I'm worried a little bit about their offensive line depth, but I'll put the Rams at number four. Listen, uh, they're eight and one at home in the regular season since the start of last year. That, that's why I picked them against the Saints. We don't think as the, we don't think of the LA Coliseum as a home field advantage, right? It's just not that loud. It's not Lambeau. It's not Foxborough. It's not Philadelphia. They don't lose at home. They play really, really well. It's a fast track, and they're a fast team. Cooper Cup, we all worried about Todd Gurley. Cooper Cup, I believe, is Jared Goff's key. Cooper Cup has been instrumental so far. He was huge in the Saints game. And by the way, only other team that has won as many games in the last two years is New England. So the Rams are a real team with a real structure. Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I still think they have uh, – Dak has only been sacked once. I still think, when healthy, it's the best offensive line in the NFL. I think they've added really smart pieces. Listen, they have about eight elite players. You know, not many teams in the league – I don't think New England has eight elite players. I mean, they've got an elite running back, an elite receiver, uh, elite left tackle, elite center, two elite linebackers, an elite corner, an elite edge rusher. Now, I, I wonder when you pay all those guys, they're going to have some holes. Yeah, but you just can't keep paying everybody. But when I look at Dallas, they've scored nine offensive touchdowns over two games. You know how many times – it took them six games – to get there last year. So that just tells you the Randall Cobbs, the Michael Gallups, the healthy offensive line, an ascending Dak. This is a real offense. This is a real offense. Kansas City. Do you know Patrick Mahomes has only started 19 games? Why does it feel like he started? He's been around for a long time. Maybe because every game is so spectacular that they all get embedded in our minds. Listen, they, uh, shocker, number one in passing offense. Uh, they have scored 25-plus points in 23 straight games. And what, you're, what you have here right now is you have the best play designer in the NFL, Andy Reid, with the best quarterback talent in the league, Patrick Mahomes. So I got news for you. Uh, we don't have the AFC. I, I'm just going to give the programming director at CBS a heads up. You're going to want to put them on about 12 times a year. Because when you get the play designer and the all-time quarterback talent, that was like Holmgren and Favre. You just had to watch the Packers for a decade. That's what they're hoping Lafleur and Rodgers come. Play designer and great quarterback talent. What category is New England defensively not number one? Uh, they're really good. It's the best secondary in the league. They never get beat over the top. They have active, hard-hitting, fast linebackers. They don't have one elite pass rusher, but they led the NFL last year in pressures. They make no mistakes. They don't get penalized. Brady is so detailed. I think they have the deepest running back group in the NFL. Uh, the wide receivers with Antonio Brown, you know, it's a work in progress. But since the, the, they haven't been this explosive with Josh Gordon and Antonio Brown and Julian Edelman, you got to pick your poison on that. They're not even playing their rookie. They're not going to play him till Thanksgiving. So I think you, you're you really trying to pick apart them. If you don't have New England one and, and Kansas City two, you know, you're trying to pick apart. I, I get Hall of Fame coaches and world-class quarterbacks. Uh, I put New England one because they have a better defense, and I do think post-Thanksgiving that's going to matter. All right, we got a lot of stuff today. Did, uh, Texans did not make it. I was way more impressed with Buffalo. I do believe it's the first time I've had Buffalo in my herd hierarchy. I don't have a, I don't have a major problem with this. I'm, I'm a little skeptical about Buffalo still, but it might just be because it's Buffalo. And Houston, Minnesota, and Atlanta, I was more impressed with Buffalo. I, I'm more imp- I don't care who you beat. You go on the road, you're five for five in the red zone. I think, I think that Buffalo staff's good. Yeah, I mean, you could make that argument for Baltimore. No one is. You, you beat who you play. <laughs> I think Baltimore's offense is more explosive than Buffalo. I think their defense is, I'd go Buffalo's defense, but there is something to Lamar. It's people are struggling to figure him out. Only team that's figured him out was the Chargers the second time they played him. Right. So that may, in division, it may take a couple of times. But if you just get him once, nobody's stopping him. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.